Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jimmy Wallington. Illness has prevented the appearance of Dick Powell and June Allison on the following program as previously announced. Screen Directors Playhouse stars Joseph Cotton, Evelyn Keyes, production Mrs. Mike, director Louis King. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And the makers of Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present not make-believe, but a true story that won the hearts of America first as a novel and then as a motion picture. But before we begin our adaptation of Mrs. Mike, here's a word from the Ford Motor Company. Ladies and gentlemen, less than a week ago, the fine new Ford for 1951 went on display. And already, people are saying it's the finest Ford ever produced. They're 100% right, too. For this 1951 Ford is a quality car. A car that's designed and built to give you long-lasting satisfaction for the years ahead. Your neighborhood Ford dealer wants you to examine the new Ford's 43 look-ahead features. When you do, you'll learn that Ford's new automatic ride control makes the roughest roads easy on you. Easy on the car itself. You'll find that the automatic mileage maker will save you important gasoline money during the long life of your new Ford. You'll see the beautiful new luxury lounge interiors, the smart new safety glow control panel, and the automatic posture control for increased driver comfort. Inspect the 1951 Ford tomorrow. You'll agree you can pay more, but you can't buy better. A story so completely human as Mrs. Mike is not easily put upon the screen. Fashioning it into a fine motion picture called upon every art and craft of the screen director. And we're proud to have that director here now to introduce his own story. Mr. Lewis King. Thank you. They say that every director has a weakness for a certain kind of story. Mine is for a good story, believable, true. I think we've got it in Mrs. Mike. And just how true it is, you'll discover at the end of the program. But now here it is, Mrs. Mike, starring Evelyn Keyes in her original role of Kathy. And Joseph Cotton as Sergeant Mike. Shortly after the turn of the century, the scarlet tunics of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police had become a symbol of justice and service in the hinterlands of Canada. Throughout the vast emptiness of the North, the Mountie became all things to all men. Policeman, soldier, judge, doctor, advisor, friend. Such was the husky lad with the Irish grin whom his friends called Sergeant Mike. Sergeant Mike Flanagan posted that summer to the Calgary detail of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, stop your drunken yammering. Open up, open up. Open up or I'll dump him on the porch. Now, now, my fine canary. I have a chair. 
There's, there's something wrong. Uh, a grand, grand, a glorious victory. Uh, where's John Kennedy? Uncle John is out. Out where? Well, he's looking for Danny Hawkins, the ranch cook. Oh, this is Danny Hawkins, the ranch cook. Oh. Grand, a glorious victory. He's still celebrating the end of the Boer War. Who are you? Catherine Mary O'Fallon. I just arrived this afternoon from Boston. Oh, oh, your uncle told me about you. How do you like Canada, Catherine Mary O'Fallon? It's colorful, isn't it? Oh, I'm afraid Dan is giving you the wrong impression. Oh, I, I'm Sergeant Mike Flanagan. Oh, you're a Mountie, aren't you? Well, I do my best. Here, I'll haul him to the kitchen pump. You'll have to prime it. Uh, have you got any coffee to sober him up? Yes, on the stove. I'll get it. Here, Danny, here's what you need. Sitting in for you, too. Coffee's coming. I poured the coffee into a tin mug and looked very hard at Sergeant Mike Flanagan. Of course, he didn't know that I was looking. If this was Canada, I was sure I was going to like it. He was so big and ruddy colored. Quite a man was Sergeant Mike. All at once, I was very glad that Uncle John had sent for me at the school where I went after my parents died. Sergeant Mike in his red coat and black breeches with a yellow stripe. Oh! Well, what happened? Oh, the mug overflowed. I dropped it. Here, here, I'll pour another. Yeah, oh, right on the hill. Yeah. Let's have the coffee. It might be too hot. I'll see. Yeah. Ooh. You made this? Yes. Now I know why they drink tea in Boston. Oh. How are you, Danny? Yeah. No, 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 no. I use poison. I'm poison. Such a predator. You will hate me. You'll hate Oh, well, it certainly wasn't that bad. <laughs> All the same, your uncle will be expecting supper and... I'm thinking you'd better let me cook it. Oh, why, Well, just, you... just so you won't say we put you to work on your first day in Canada. <laughs> Catherine Mary O'Fallon was a name, and a lovely name. Kathy. Now, I don't pride myself on being a ladies' man, but she... She took rattling little notice of me that night. Not that I wasn't filling my eyes with her... Being a newcomer to this sort of country and all that, she might, she might get herself into trouble. So, purely in the line of duty, I rode up to John Kennedy's ranch come 9 o'clock the next morning. Well, good morning, Mike. Morning, John. Oh, 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 easy, easy. Oh. And what brings the Mounties around at this early hour? Really? Well, I hadn't noticed the time just riding by, and I thought I'd stop in and say uh, hello. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just by way of passing the time of day... The last time I saw Kathy, she was having one of the hands saddle up a horse for her. Oh, can she ride? Don't know, but I figure we're going to find out pretty soon. Uh, good, good morning. Whoa, 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 well, whoa, whoa. Well, I, Miss Fallon, if you're going to ride a man's saddle, you'll do well to wear a man's hand. I'm doing very nicely, thank you. Very nicely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Kathy, he's running away. Come on, I'll catch her. Come on. Uh. Oh, I don't know which whoa, was more boy. infuriating, that whoa, boy. darn horse or that Sergeant whoa. Mike. Boy. All full of beauty. Boy. Never so much as an admiring glance out of him. Oh, I Boy. guess the horse was worse. But not much worse. Kathy, keep your feet in the stirrups. I can't. Well, let me, let me, yep, let me get the bridle. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Now tell me, Mr. Fallon. Who? Oh. You want to kill yourself? Oh, no, Sergeant Flanagan. Then do you want me to teach you how to ride, Mr. Fallon? Oh, why, yes, Sergeant Mike. No doubt about it, I enjoyed Kathy's company. I guess a Mountie has no business seeing so much of one girl, but soon I'd be heading north, and for the time being, Kathy was fun to be with. She did learn to wear a man's pants and to ride, and she even learned how to make coffee. I sometimes think Sergeant Mike was trifling with me during those weeks. Oh, he taught me how to ride, but he, he kept talking about the winter and moving north. I guess maybe he was trifling all right. But I wasn't. Oh, let's sit down by the stream. I'm tired. I watch your dress. Mike. Yes, Kathy. Do you like being a Mountie? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's horrid. 
You know, I just heard the other day that a Mountie has to be in for five years before he can get married. That's right, Kathy. The good rule it is. Well, what's so good about well, it? Well, after five years, a Mountie knows what kind of life he's asking a woman to share. Oh, but that's so silly. Is it? Do you have any idea of what, what the life is like? The loneliness, the cold, and the danger? Marrying into the force can be like sentencing yourself to solitary confinement. But you like it, Mike. What's that got to do with it? Well, if you like it, a woman can like it. Didn't you ever think of that? A woman doesn't know. Not even a Mountie knows until after five years, and that's why he can't get married. Um, Mike. Yes, Kathy? Um, how long have you been in the force? Six and a half years. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Oh, my, but the, the snow must be beautiful up north. Huh, beautiful. <laughs> It's probably just like Boston in the winter. Just like Boston, give or take a few dozen degrees below zero. Kathy, now get this through your head. It's bitter and fierce, and, and it's no place for a woman. You know something, Mike? I never catch cold in the wintertime. Have you ever been alone? I mean, really alone with your nearest neighbor two weeks away by dog sled? Oh, but you'd be there. What have I got to do with this? We're just talking in generalities. Oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> Besides, a Mountie is off on patrol for weeks at a time. But he comes home. Kathy. Yes, my. Get, oh, Rain, let's get out of here. You'll be soaked. I'll race you to the house. Oh, he was weakening. I knew he was weakening. I could tell as we ran to Uncle John's house. The way he held his arm around me, strong and protecting. And the way he wouldn't even look at me because he was thinking so hard. Running through the rain toward the Kennedy place, I wouldn't let myself look at Kathy. Lovely, brave, foolish Kathy. I told myself a thousand times I'd never take a woman into the North Country. Kathy was different. Perhaps she had the stuff, the toughness, the tenacity, and the humor that a person needed up there just to stay alive. I, I was troubled, but I had to face it. I was in love, too. Mountie, keeping a young girl out in the rain. Oh, I'm all right, Uncle John. I'm wonderful. You go upstairs, Kathy. Get under some dry clothes. Oh, now, who do you think you're ordering about? Get, 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 get. Oh, all right. Now, she'll need a hot foot bath, Mike. Give me a hand with the tub. Sure. <clears throat> uh, can you heft that cauldron off the stove by yourself? I've, I've got it. Now. Uh. Oh, you sure this isn't too hot for her? Kind of worried about Kathy, aren't you, Mike? Well, I don't want her to catch cold. Uh, Sergeant, I hear there's snow already up in Edmonton. Well, about time for it. No place for a woman in that country. Well, don't you think it depends on the woman? It might. It uh, might at that. Now, John Kennedy, stop sidestepping the point. We're both talking about Kathy and you know it. I do, I do. And if Kathy cares enough for me, she'll want to come with me. Mike, there's nobody I'd rather see have her than you. But think, Mike. Think. I have thought. I love her. I love Kathy. Do you? Oh, Mike, what do you? What are you doing running around in your bare feet? Oh, never mind my I bare feet. Right along in that tub of oh. hot water. Oh, put me down. Sure. Right here. Oh, it's hot. Good for you. Oh. Keep quiet, Kathy. John. I'm asking your permission to marry your niece. Mike. Get back in the tub. Uh, well, Mike, uh, as I said before... I'll if... see that she has the best of care. I love her, John. I want her to be my wife. Oh. Will you stay in the tub? Mike, I, I just can't give my permission off Sergeant but... Flanagan, don't you think that someone else's permission comes first? Kathy, Well, darling. who do you propose to marry, me or... or Uncle John? Oh, God bless you, Kathy. Thank you. Catherine... Mary O'Fallon, I'm asking you to be my wife. Will you marry me? Oh, Mike, you finally did it. Will you, Kathy? I'll think it over, Sergeant Flanagan. Maybe I will, and maybe I... I, I won't! You have just heard the first act of Mrs. Mike, starring Joseph Cotton and Evelyn Keyes. But now, here's a word from RCA Victor. A great many families who plan to give themselves television sets for Christmas still haven't put in definite orders, because they can't agree on what screen size is the best buy. 
Of course, everybody has a conviction, from Grandma, who thinks it's coziest to sit real close to a 12-and-a-half-inch screen, to Junior, who favors a screen so big it would take two men and a boy to see all of it. At this juncture, it's wonderful to hear the calm, cool voice of authority and experience, speaking from a position of world leadership in both television research and television manufacture, the voice of RCA Victor. RCA Victor's conviction about screen size is crystal clear. In big picture television, your best buy by any standard is 19 inch. Why? Because 19 inch gives you the biggest picture enjoyable to watch in a normal size room. You don't want bigger television unless you live in a palace or a theater. And of course, you can't buy finer television than RCA Victor Million Proof Television, proven in over a million homes. Choose tomorrow among the 18 magnificent new models at your RCA Victor dealers 12 and a half inch. 16-inch or 19-inch, every RCA Victor set is every inch a king. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mrs. Mike, starring Evelyn Keyes as Kathy and Joseph Cotton as Mike. Mike and I were married just after the snows came, and I became Mrs. Sergeant Michael Flanagan, a Maltese wife. We were married, and I brushed my cheek against his uniform and told him I was very, very happy. And then he was assigned to a place called Hendrick's Hope. Kathy and I were married, and on the first leg of our journey to Hendrick's Hope, she had said yes to a distant land, to discomfort and loneliness, to a life far different than anything she had ever experienced. And I wondered if I hadn't been selfish in making her a part of myself, a part of the North. Soon we'd know. Hendrick's hope was 400 miles north of Edmonton by dog sled. Kathy began her education on the trail. She rode in the dog sled, her bright, fascinated face wreathed in the fur hood of her parka. Oh, it was a fairyland, white, gleaming, unbelievably empty, and not nearly as cold as Mike said it would be. The season was still early, and we were pretty far south. Before long, the real cold would begin, the killing, biting, tearing cold. And from now on, we'd be alone, a man and a woman against the wilderness. Can I help, Mike? Stay in that sleeping bag. Here, try this soup. Mmm, good. Well, what do you think of life in the snow? It gives me a feeling of... Well, as if we're the only two people in the whole world. We are, Kathy. Is it a g good feeling? Oh, yes. Did we make good time today? 27 miles. Is that all? That's great. If we can keep it up, we'll make Hendricks hope in two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, my. What was that? Just a wolf, darling. Is it dangerous? Hmm. Pretty dangerous. Better snuggle real close, Kathy. Uh, just for safety. As we drove north, the cold became more intense. Kathy's first response to it was extreme drowsiness, the danger sign. Oh, Mike, I'm so sleepy. I could fall asleep right here in this lake. No, you don't, Kathy. You're going to get out and run. Oh, but no Mike... No but We've got to keep your circulation going. Come on, Kathy. Come on, out you go. And I ran beside Mike, running and stumbling and feeling the cold like a burn across my face. Time and space were all knit together, and each day was like seeing the day before in a mirror, cold and white, white and cold. Kathy took it without a complaint. She learned the routine of Arctic travel and accepted it with understanding and good spirit. Oh, Mike. Mike, I'm out of breath. Can't we rest? Oh, 
Whoa, whoa. Oh. Kathy, do you think he could do with a real bed and a roof over your head tonight? Oh, Mike, uh -huh. stop torturing me. I was waiting for us, Kathy. Just over that rise, Henry Howard's place. <laughs> Sergeant Mike, come in, come in. How are you, Henry? Mrs. Howard. Mike, is it, is it a girl? It is not, it's a woman. Mr. and Mrs. Howard, meet Mrs. Mike. Oh. Well, we're real proud to have you. Don't get many visitors out this way. Well, I'm certainly glad to be here. A real house. Oh, my, let me look at you. You're pretty. Yeah, you done all right, Mike. Mm. Of course, you can't tell whether they're all bundled up like that. Her name's Kathy. I'll get your things down. You come along with me, Kathy. Now, this room belongs to you and Sergeant Mike. It's, it's very nice. No, it isn't. It's rough and cluttered, but it's a room. Well, I, I expect you want to wash up. There's the bowl, and here's a towel. Let me pour it for you. Thank you, Mrs. Howard. No, I'll, I'll just leave you be. Oh. Here are your things. Everything all right, darling? Ah, oh, the water's freezing. It only feels cold because you're beginning to warm up. <laughs> Hand me the towel, Mike. Uh. Oh, it's such a comfort to be married to a man who can explain away the cold. I guess a man who would keep you warm would be too much to ask. Oh, Ask and find out. Oh, my. Don't, please. Oh, my. What's wrong? Oh, the towel. Look at it. Was I that dirty? Oh, no, no, dear. That, that towel had a head start on you. But don't they ever wash? Well, laundering isn't easy up here in the wintertime. Nature demands a certain tolerance, Kathy. Sergeant Mike, you wash up in the kitchen. I want a little time with your wife, too. Well, I guess you can borrow her. Mrs. Howard, you must be terribly lonely out here. Lonely? Of course, there's plenty of work to do, but when Henry goes off prospecting in the summer, Lord, but I get a yearning to talk to somebody, even to Henry. Has your husband ever discovered gold? No. Not yet. But he will. He was mighty close nine years ago, and again four years ago. He'll make a strike, and when he does, you know what? We'll go to Edmonton and have us a holiday. We'll eat all sorts of things and buy pretty clothes and just walk down the street and look at the lights and the stores and all the people. And maybe if it's a big strike, we won't never come back and I'll have folks and neighbors to talk to and we'll... we'll... I shouldn't be bothering you with all this. You're probably famished. I... I understand, Mrs. Howard. For dessert, we have prunes. Ah, uh, lumberman strawberries. Yeah, you just eat them, Henry. I'm sorry, Mike, Kathy, but that's all we have. Oh, that's fine, Mrs. Howard. I like prunes. Don't worry about us. Wish we had some candy. Oh, well, we haven't. No wonder the way that man hankers for candy, just like a baby. Well, I can't help it. Honest. I get such a terrible craving, like some men have for liquor. Only with me, it's candy. We had some, only now it's gone. We can't get no more. Not for months and months. You had some, all right. We had a whole cabin full of candy. Well, I just couldn't help it. It was something terrible. Well, I can tell you how terrible it was. My china went long ago, but I, I saved enough money for a new set. I give it to him to buy the china. He come back with a load of candy. That's what he did. Terrible. Such a terrible craving. It's prunes, Kathy. Oh, I, I was just listening. But I saved... One cup. One piece of china. And here it is. One cup hidden through the years. One cup that hasn't been broken. It's such a beautiful thing, isn't it, Kathy? Oh, yes, it is. 
for you, dear, to celebrate this wonderful night. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Howard. Have some tea, Kathy. Please, darling. I didn't know we still had that cup laying around. That's fine, Mike. That's why I still have it, because you couldn't get your big, clumsy hands on it. Would have been broken... <laughs> broken long ago. I... I dropped it. Doesn't matter, dear. It was only a cup. Just an old cup. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Kathy! Let me talk to her, Sergeant Mike. Kathy, we, we never used it. We won't miss it. Oh, it meant so much to you. I'm, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. When Henry strikes gold, we'll have all the cups we want. Kathy. I'll leave it with you, Sergeant Mike. Kathy. Oh, Mike, Mike. That poor woman. She knows he'll never strike gold. That cup. That was the only thing, her most precious thing. Oh, we'll bring another cup, a whole set of them. Oh, Mike, is this what's ahead for no, us? No, oh, Kathy, this no. awful loneliness and dirt and squalor. Mike, will it, will it be so hopeless? Oh, darling, now his life isn't like this. We'll have, we'll have a lot of homes all over Canada, and they'll be fine and cheerful and full of our love for each other. Oh, Mike. I promise you, Kathy, the only thing the North Country will do to us is bring us closer together. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> I know it's only a wolf. Oh, Mike, hold me tight. See, Kathy, the North is bringing us closer together already. <laughs> The third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Mrs. Mike continues in just a moment. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes, a way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try anison. You'll like the convenience of anison tablets. And you will be delighted with anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of five great radio shows that are brought to you by your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford the car that's built for the years ahead, RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison, Colinos, Bicidol, and other fine drug products. The Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mrs. Mike will continue after a brief pause for station identification. for the third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mrs. Mike, starring Joseph Cotton as Mike and Evelyn Keyes as Kathy. <laughs> K. 
Kathy and I spent only one night at the Howard's cabin. Then we took to the trail again, sliding north to Hendricks' Hope. My wife quickly threw off the depression of that terrible evening, and her eyes were glowing with trust and confidence for our future. Mike's tenderness soothed my doubts and fears, and I looked forward to the beginning of our lives together at Hendricks' Hope. And at night we huddled together, two people alone in a wilderness without end. And during the day, I alternated between riding in the sled and running alongside to beat off the cold. Kathy. Kathy, there it is at the foot of that mountain. Hendrick's Hope. It's, it's not very large, is it? Oh, just a trading post, darling, but it's home. It's home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we are, Henderson, right on schedule. Who's the we? Not Mrs. Mike. There she is. Kathy, this is Mr. Henderson, the trader. How do you do? Mike, look at all those Indians. Don't stare, Kathy. It's a welcoming committee. Young Stewart has waited impatiently for Sergeant Mike's return. Young Stewart? My son, Mrs. Mike. Oh, where is Mrs. Henderson? I... I'm Mrs. Henderson. Oh. Uh, how do you do? Oh, we are anxious to get settled, Henderson. Well, go ahead, Sergeant. Your cabin's all ready. Even laid a fire for you. Thanks. Why? He's married to an Indian woman. The fine woman she is, Kathy. But... Now, Kathy, I told you once that nature demanded a certain tolerance. I didn't mean it like that, Mike. I was... I was just surprised. Why? I'm sorry, Sergeant. But give me a chance. I, I'm still learning, you know. Yeah, I know, Kathy. You're doing fine. <laughs> well, here it is, Royal Northwest Mounted Police Post and home of the Flanagans. Oh, Mike, I'm so excited. Give me the key. Oh, no, we don't lock doors up here, Kathy. Oh, come on, Mrs. Mike. Oh. Over the threshold. <laughs> oh, Mike, I'm too heavy with all these furs. Oh, you're the most precious thing in the world, Kathy. I, I hope you like our new home. I will, Mike. I know I will. Well, then, let's go. Welcome to Hendrick's Hope. And here you'll have to stand on your own two feet. Oh, it's nice. Wait till I stir that fire up. It was small and rough, and not at all like the dream houses the girls used to talk about in Boston. But it was going to be ours. And I saw so many things I wanted to do. It looks a little bare right now, but with your talent and my work, we'll make a palace out of it. Oh, Mike, I, I almost forgot. Uncle John told me to give this to you in our new home. It's a sort of a housewarming gift. What? <laughs> Good Irish whiskey. That was very thoughtful of Uncle John. He said it was to fortify you for a long life with oh, me. Oh, did he? Well, I hadn't expected you to drive me to drink. Oh, Mike, we're going to be so happy here. Just keep your arms around me. And I'll make a real home. <gasps> My... Kathy. What? Behind you, Indians. Me Atenew. Great pain. It's all right, Kathy's just one of the local men. What's the trouble, Atenew? Great pain. Here, tooth. Oh, toothache, is it? Well, uh, sit down. Here, here, here. Now, open your mouth. Uh, oh! Now. Well, all right. Now, well, Kathy, it's it's a bad tooth, all right. The dentist will have to take it out. A dentist, Mike, up here? Sure, Dr. Mike Flanagan. You? Mrs. Mike, you married a very talented fellow. I have to get my medical kit. But, Mike... Oh, pain. Great pain. Oh, you poor man. Sick Indian. Mike had tried to impress me with one thing above all, that he was responsible for the people of his post. And since I was the sergeant's wife, I did what I could. I opened Uncle John's bottle of Irish whiskey. Here, Mr. Adenu, maybe this will help ease the pain. Drink it. Mm. Ah. All right, Kathy. You'll have to help me. Oh, but Mike, I don't know what to do. Well, just read me the instructions out of the book and... Oh, uh, get me that bottle of whiskey to sterilize my forceps. <coughs> wonder what Adler's so happy about. Here's your whiskey, Mike. Thanks. Now, you'll have... Ooh. Kathy. Oh, no, no, it wasn't me, Mike. He drank it. 
That's a new. Well, he was in such pain, I thought it would help. You thought? Kathy, don't you realize you've broken the law I'm supposed to enforce? You could get six months in prison for giving liquor to an Indian. Oh, but, Mike, I only thought I'll that... I'll attend to you later. Now, let's get this tooth out. Here's the book, Karen. You start reading here while I work. Yes, Doctor. Now, Atnew, keep your mouth open. Uh, Shall I start? Uh, yeah, go ahead. The operator's left arm is hooked around the patient's head uh, so that the left hand can be used to, uh, to assist the forceps. Right, <gasps> I've got that. With the right hand, carefully insert the forceps into the mouth. Oh, oh shut up. Well, Mike, you told me no, that... No, no, not you, him. Now, keep reading. It is important at this point to test the patient's Ooh. pulse. Well, how can I yeah. test his pulse when I've got both hands in his mouth? <laughs> Mike, you'd Ooh. better do what the book well, says. I, I can't. It's impossible. But the book's... Oh. What's the matter? I skipped a page. That was for diagnosing the measles. <laughs> Pete's sake. Yeah. Now, uh, secure the tooth in the beak of the forceps uh, well. and pull with a twisting motion. Well? Here it goes. <laughs> There you are, Afternoon, clean as a whistle. Oh, oh. Mike, we did it. He squaw good to Afternoon. Pretty squaw, take tooth. Uh. Take tooth, love charm. Keep love always. Take it, Kathy, take it. Oh, thank you very much. I. Oh, Mike, I think I'm going Well, to... Kathy, don't faint, don't. Uh, pretty squaw, but plenty weak. <laughs> Gradually, life at Hendricks Hope became the only life I'd ever known. For weeks at a time, Mike would be off on patrol, visiting Indian villages, hunting for lost travelers, tracking down minor infringements of the law. And during these lonely times, Mrs. Henderson became my closest friend. And she told me that soon she was going to have another baby. Such a strange question, Kathy. Oh, why is it so strange? When do you expect your baby? When baby is ready, he will come. But but don't you have any fear of having a baby? Fear? Of a little baby? Well, I mean, with, without having a doctor or nurse. But I'm not sick. No need doctor. <sighs> You're so much braver and so much wiser than so many people I know. Here, dogs. Your man, Kathy. It's Mike. Oh, he's back. Mike. Oh, Mike! Oh, Mike, darling. Kathy, now stop fussing over me. Did you miss me? No, not oh, a no, bit. A fine attitude. Oh, darling, it was the longest two weeks in my life. Did you work hard? Well, there's a whole Indian village that needs vaccination. That and who's upriver to tell them I'll be back. And I found that missing trapper. Oh, my. Can a trapper get lost? A, a man who knows this country? Well, in the dog country, Kathy, anybody can get lost, including the dogs. Oh, but you, it, it could happen to you, too. Oh, no, Kathy, not to me. Don't, don't frown like that. How, how would it look for a mountie to get lost? Sergeant <laughs> Mike. Looks like we've got company. Who's that Indian with that, you know? Oh, chief of the tribe. I'm going to vaccinate. Uh, oh, hello, chief. Uh, hmm. You're mad about something. What's the trouble, Atenu? He say tribe no want vaccination. Oh, medicine is good, chief. There is sickness in beaver tribe in south. No. No like white man's medicine. Bring evil spirit. Or oh, white man's needle keep away sickness. Chief afraid. No want. Atanu, tell the chief for me he doesn't have the courage of a squaw. Ah. Squaw talk brave. Squaw braver than chief. Look, I have needle here. Kathy, uh, when were you vaccinated last? Oh, years ago. Now, well, get ready for some more white man's medicine. Chief, watch brave squaw. Now, if the needle slips, Kathy, this is no time to scream. There. See? All uh, right, Chief, you're next. No, Atanu first. Uh, well, pull up your sleeve, Atanu. <gasps> I won't hurt at all. There you are. <gasps> now you, Chief... Now, squaw. Oh, but she just... Now, squaw. Oh, well. What's another vaccination, more or less? There's such a thing as being yeah. too... All done. ...healthy. Good. Good. Now, chief. Pull up your sleeve. There. All there is to it. You come to village. How big is this village, Mike? About 200. And bring squaw. We go. 
Frank Squaw? Oh, no, Mike. <laughs> Where's Squaw's courage? Don't laugh at me, medicine man. Getting pretty good, huh, Kathy? Pulled teeth, given vaccinations, treated frostbite. But once I even delivered a baby. Then you'll be able to deliver ours. And there's the broken leg that... Ours. Our baby. Oh, oh Kathy. I don't see what you're so surprised oh, about. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, you're wonderful. Won't Uncle John be surprised to see Uncle us? Uncle John? Yes, I thought we'd go to Calgary for the baby. Oh, would Edmund would be better? Kathy, you'd have your baby right here. At Hendrick's home? Of course, dear. But, Mike, it's so far away from everything and everybody. Oh, Kathy, the women up here know about, more about having babies than anybody. Mrs. Henderson isn't worried. Oh, no, but she's already had one child. Besides... Besides, she'll be having hers before long, and then you'll see how easy it is. Oh, but, Mike, this wilderness... Wilderness? And... Kathy, you've never seen the north in the summertime. It's warm and fresh and green and beautiful. You'll love it. And our son will love it, too. He'll hunt and fish. And what and... makes you so sure it's going to be a heat? Mrs. Mike, a girl baby wouldn't dare be born to Sergeant Flanagan. The seasons changed, just as Mike said they would. But with each passing month, a little fear built up stronger inside of me. I refused to recognize it, because Mike was so sure and splendid and tender. But I waited anxiously for Mrs. Henderson to have her baby. The ice broke on the river and summer came. Kathy was growing heavier every week. The smile on her face became wan and strained. She identified herself completely with Mrs. Henderson. And then the Henderson baby was born. A boy baby. Born dead. Mike, Mike, we've got to get out of here. Kathy, I'm sorry about Mrs. Henderson's baby, but that isn't going to happen to you. Do you love me, Mike? I love you, Kathy. Then take me away. Get me to Edmund and a Calgary. Kathy, I can't. Why can't you? Because you're a Mountie. Because the force means more to you than I do. Kathy, don't you understand? An overland trip to Edmund is impossible for her. You'd have to walk most of the way. Then take me someplace, anywhere but here, Mike, where I won't be alone. Kathy, what can I do? It would take months for me to get a transfer, and you, you can't take a long trip now. Listen to me, Mike. I won't have my baby here. If I have to crawl out of Hendrick's Hope on my hands and knees, I won't have my baby here. <laughs> I applied for a transfer and prayed that the orders would come in time. They did. I was posted to Fort Manette. It was a larger settlement, and there was a doctor there. But Fort Manette was much further north than Hendrick's Hope. The journey would take us several weeks, and Kathy's time was close. We traveled by canoe. The river flowed on endlessly, and the summer, the northern summer, closed in on me like a green veil. The fear wasn't inside of me anymore. I was inside of it. And I hated the river and Mike's uniform. Most of all, I hated the river. Hold on, Kathy. We'll soon be making camp for the night. Mike, I'm scared. We're only a few days from Fort Manette. We'll never make it, Mike. We will, Kathy. We'll... I don't want to have my baby here. Not in this wilderness. Just a few days, Kathy. Mike, we haven't got a few days. Are you sure? I'm sure. Look, Kathy, there's a cabin on the river only about a day and a half away. You can stay with whoever lives there. I'll go on ahead and bring the doctor back. It'll be faster that way. Anything, Mike. Anything. We'd reached the cabin. A woman lived there alone. A gone, lonely woman named Mrs. Bryan. Mike said he'd be back the next day with the doctor. And he left me. And Mrs. Bryan put me to bed. What are you so tied up about? What are you scared of? My baby, Mrs. Bryan. Well, even if your husband doesn't get back in time... Yours wouldn't be the first baby I've delivered. I don't want to lose him. I, I don't want to lose him. If you're going to lose your baby, you'll lose your baby. No. Not if he's strong. But if your baby is weak, you'll lose him. Better that way. A weak baby will die anyway. Maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe two years, but he'll die. No. And when he's gone, a piece of your heart is gone with him. You'd have been better off. No. I'll leave me alone, please. I'm only trying to help you, Mrs. Flanagan. I'm only trying to help. Oh, oh the pain... Why? Why? Then it began. The birth struggle. My struggle against Mrs. Bryan. The cabin. The north. And yes, even against Mike. And my delirium, even against Mike believing me. was 
all shadows now, cold and empty. And in the shadows there would be quick yellow flashes, and I knew those were the pains. And then the flashes stopped, and the shadows became a darkness, and the darkness became sleep. Kathy. Mike. Who's with you? This is Sarah, Kathy. Hello, Mrs. Mike. The baby. <laughs> the baby is extra special, perfect. Listen. Listen, Kathy. Oh, Mike, I'm, I'm so glad you brought the doctor in time. The doctor was out on a case, Kathy. I brought Sarah instead. No, doctor. You'll have your baby easy. Easy? It didn't seem like that. Mrs. Bryan. Oh, that Mrs. Bryan. She very strange from living alone too much. She want to help, but she scare you. You better rest now, Kathy. The baby, Mike. I want to see him. It's not a him, Kathy. We have a wonderful, beautiful baby daughter. <laughs> We named her Mary Oroon, Mary Oroon Flanagan, and she looked just like Mike. She was a strong baby, and her little body was all the strength and sweetness of the North Country. And then, when I was strong enough, we went on to Fort Manette. But only two of us started the canoe trip to Fort Manette. Three of us finished. The baby was the image of Kathy. And Kathy, she was like a flame glowing and warm and breathless. The fear was all forgotten, and now, now I, I think for the very first time, she embraced the North and said, this is part of me, and I'm part of it. This is it, Kathy, our second home. Oh, it's bigger, isn't it, Mike? Go on. Over the door. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh Mike! Oh, Sarah, you've brought your friends. No, Mrs. Mike, they are your friends. This is Dr. McIntosh. I hear you did a very good job of having your baby without me, Mrs. Mike. <laughs> the best I could, Doctor. And here is Louis, my husband. Come, ça va. Oh, merci bien, Louis. And here is Pierre and Georgia. And soon you will know everybody. Oh, yes. And this is my husband, Sergeant Mike. Sergeant Mike, everybody know. And this is our daughter, Mary. Oh, <laughs> Uh-oh, where's another thingamajig, Kathy? This is a job for the mountain. <laughs> it was wonderful to have so many friends again. We were isolated, but we weren't alone. Our daughter grew and grew, and Mike was busy, and, well, me? I'll be darned if I wasn't getting prettier. It is meal for the baby. Oh, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Just look at her. She's about due to wake up and be very hungry. Oh, she is beautiful. You have more babies, Kathy, but you always keep first family. First family? Women up here, we speak of first family, second family, third family. When you lose a family, you start again. Oh. You cannot stop, give up. If you let North win, it take everything. If you fight it, maybe it takes something. But in the end, you win. Mary, my baby. Don't you worry about that baby. She's strong. You keep first family. Our life fell into a wonderful, exciting routine. There was work, lots of work, and there was always Kathy and Mary, my family. The months went by, and Kathy became lovelier than ever. She was getting used to everything, even oh! this. Why, there's a man in our room. What? Squaw scared of Atano. Oh, Atano, how did you get in here? Me come north. Me have toothache. There's a Mountie at Hendrick's Hope. Why didn't he take... Mountie pull tooth. Well, what do you want from us? Atano, hear about baby. Bring good luck charm. Here. Kathy, he's brought you another tooth. Oh, thank you, Atanu. Thank you very much. There's nothing she needed more. Ty 
enrolled itself into a tight, comfortable little ball. And without any hint at all, Mary Arun was over two years old, and it was Christmas, and the settlement at Fort Minette was celebrating its 25th anniversary. There was a party, and Mike was making a speech. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Gentlemen? Well, all right, I won't be so formal. <laughs> Friends, it's, it's just about two and a half years since my family and I came. What is Sergeant, it? What is it? Sergeant, talk to her. Sarah, she faints. She's sick. She was sick, all right. Fort Manette would never forget that Christmas. Sarah was sick. With diphtheria. Diphtheria? Yes, Kathy. You and the baby stay here in the house. You understand? Don't don't leave the cabin. Don't let anyone in. Oh, Mike, I'm afraid. Dr. McIntosh and I will try to get the thing under control. I've sent a man south for more serum. Will the baby be all right? Just avoid contact with anybody. Talk through the door or the window. What about you, Mike? I'll be all right, but I can't stay here. But Mary and I will be alone. That'll be more than a few hundred yards away. If you need me, Kathy, hang, uh, hang a white sheet in front of the house. A white sheet. Got to go. Macintosh might need you. Mike. I'm sorry, darling. I can't even kiss you. Take care of yourself, Mike. It turned into a nightmare, a raging, vicious nightmare. The disease spread like fire, and the sick were brought to the schoolhouse, and the dead were buried far outside the settlement. Sarah died, and others, and others. Oh, uh, Mike, I, I wish... I wish the doctor could do more. You're doing your best, Doc. A uh, full-scale epidemic on our hands and not enough serum to fill the belly of a mosquito. A man will be back with serum soon now. It won't be long. It, it can't be long. It was as if we were trapped, held tight inside the settlement and attacked and attacked and attacked. And then, finally, the serum did come, the box of little bottles to drive the disease out of Fort Manette. I ran toward our cabin to tell Kathy to tell her that soon it'll all be over. I stopped at the foot of the steps. I felt my stomach twist inside of me. A white sheet, the sign of sickness, was hanging in front of the door. I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mike. With the young ones, it's so fast. I, I tried I, to guard her, to protect her. And sometimes we can't guard well enough. Sometimes it just can't do it. Mike, I'd best be getting back to the hospital. All right, Doc. Goodbye, Kathy. Go ahead, Mike. There's nothing you can do here. Oh, Kathy. Our baby's Kathy. dead, Mike. Dead. Serum a day too late. Oh, Mike, we fought this country to have our baby. And now it's taken her away from us. We can't win, Mike. We can't. We have to go on, Kathy. No. No, we don't. Because I can't. Mike, Mike, let's leave here. Leave the force. Live like human beings oh, again. darling, I can't leave. I've, I've got responsibilities here. Responsibilities to everyone but your own it's family. Not, not true, Kathy. Mike, Mike, I won't live here anymore. I'm leaving. You can come with me or not, but I'm leaving. I thought that perhaps in her grief, Kathy didn't mean the things she said that she did. I didn't blame her. I, I blamed myself for having done this to her, for having married her. And that spring, I found a man to take her south to Hendrick's Hope. There, Henderson would see that she got safely to Ed. Try not to hate me, Mike. Oh. I love you, Kathy. I love you. And she was gone. And Fort Manette became a memory too painful to bear. I put in for a transfer back to my old post to Hendricks Hope. Sergeant Mike! Let me give you a hand with the canoe. Oh, thanks, Henderson. It's been a long trip. Well, right, you'll find everything in your cabin, ready and waiting. Ah, oh, you're a good friend, thanks. Go on now, you look tired. I'll take care of the canoe. Mike. Oh. Kathy. Oh, my. oh how? Kathy. Oh, my. Oh, Mike, I couldn't leave. When Mrs. Henderson lost her baby, it made us leave here. 
But when I saw her new baby, so laughing and healthy, I, I couldn't let the North win. Mm, Kathy. If we fight it, oh, we may lose once in a while. But in the end, Mike, in the end, we'll win. <laughs> Our stars of Miss, Mrs. Mike will be back in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse brings you one of Hollywood's most engaging romantic comedies, together with the stars who made it a high point in motion picture entertainment. Our story is My Favorite Wife, directed by Garson Kanan, and recreating their original hilarious roles will be Cary Grant and Irene Dunn. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Joseph Cotton and Evelyn Keyes, and our guest director, Louis King. Lou, you promised the audience we'd show them just how true our story is. I did, Joe, but the honor belongs to Evelyn. Why, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to meet the woman whose name I borrowed in the play tonight, Mrs. Catherine Mary Flanagan, Mrs. Mike. <laughs> Mrs. Mike... Mrs. Mike, now I know what set the sergeant's heart on fire. Oh, go on with you, Joe. All that was 40 years, 45 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> with all the things that happened to you, Mrs. Mike, you ought to write a book. That's just what I thought a few years ago when I left my home in Canada to come to Hollywood. And what happened when you got here? Um, Mr. Kenny, I never in my life saw so many cars... Ambulances and women in all my, in all my, <laughs> in one place. <laughs> what about the book? <laughs> oh, I had to work for a while first, but I did have a dream come true. I've always wanted to stay at the Biltmore, and that I did. When the book came out? No, when I was working there as a laundress. <laughs> <laughs> the book came, finally I got two, my two people to listen to my story, Benedict and Nancy Friedman. We wrote it together. Then Mr. King made it into a picture. Well, what brings you back to Hollywood? Mm -hmm. Another book, Jill. This one I wrote myself. Oh, I heard about that. It's called The, the Faith of Mrs. Mrs. Killeen. That's right, Evelyn, The Faith of Mrs. Killeen. Card McCann's publishing on January the 2nd. So here I am, all excited again. Well, maybe we can make another picture. Is there a part in it for me? Evelyn, read the book and see... Good night. Good night, Good Mrs. Mike. Good night, Mrs. Mike. Joseph Cotton can currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Two Flags West. Evelyn Keyes will soon be seen in the Horizon production, The Prowler. Included in tonight's cast were Byron Kane, Ralph Moody, Janet Scott, Al Gerard, Joe Granby, Michael Ann Barrett, Frank Nelson, Martha Wentworth, and Leon Leduc. Mrs. Mike was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Carn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next Thursday when we present Irene Dunn and Cary Grant in My Favorite Wife. Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the five-show festival. Meet your friends at Duffy's Tavern tomorrow night on NBC. NBC.